Today's devotion comes from, again, the Book of Concord. We're kind of walking through it, and it's the third confession. So we're talking about these these kind of foundational confessions that we use to summarize our faith, to kind of describe our faith. Um, there are a bunch of different things that these creeds accomplish for us. And we talked about the Apostles' Creed, we talked about the Nicene Creed, and these are the ones you will hear most often. Now we're going to talk about the Athanasian Creed, which you will generally hear once a year. You will hear it on Trinity Sunday. Because the Athanasian Creed was in response to a few like controversies, um, and those controversies were in regards to like how does the Trinity work? Like essentially, they were trying to understand the nature of God. Which, if we have a God that we can understand entirely, he's not much like that. That means he's not bigger than us, which would make him not very much of a God. So I, but the this creed is in response to that. And it's really long and pretty repetitive. Um, and if I have time at the end of the devotion, I have what I think is an entertaining story about it. But the third confession, or the one called the Creed of St. Athanasius, which he made against the heretics called Arians, which reads as follows. Whoever wants to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and inviolate will doubtless perish eternally. This, however, is the Catholic faith, that we worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the person of the Father is one, that of the Son another, and that of the Holy Spirit still another. But the deity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is one, equal in glory, co-equal in majesty. What the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father is uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit is uncreated. The Father is unlimited, the Son is unlimited, the Holy Spirit is unlimited. The Father is eternal, the Son is eternal, the Holy Spirit is eternal. And yet there are not three eternal beings, but one who is eternal. Just as that there are not three uncreated or unlimited beings, but one who is uncreated and unlimited. In the same way the Father is almighty, the Son is almighty, and the Holy Spirit is almighty, and yet there are not three almighty beings, but one almighty being. Thus the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and yet there are not three gods but one God. Thus the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, and the Holy Spirit is Lord, and yet there are not three lords but one Lord. For just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to confess that each distinct person is God and Lord, so we are forbidden by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or three lords. The Father was neither made nor created nor begotten by anyone. The Son is from the Father alone, not made or created, but begotten. The Holy Spirit is from the Father and the Son, not made or created or begotten, but proceeding. Therefore there is one Father, not three fathers, one Son, not three sons, one Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after, greater or less than another. But all three persons are in themselves co-eternal and co-equal, so that, as has been stated above, in all things the Trinity and unity and the unity and Trinity must be worshipped. Therefore, whoever wants to be saved should think thus about the Trinity. But it is necessary for eternal salvation that one also faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the true faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at once God and a human being. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages, and a human being born of the substance of his mother in this age. He is perfect God and perfect human being, composed of a rational soul and human flesh. He is equal to the Father in respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and a human being, nevertheless he is not two but one Christ. However, he is, is one, not by changing of the divinity in the flesh, but by taking up of humanity into God. Indeed, he is not he is one not by a confusion of substance, but by a unity of person. For as the rational soul and the flesh are one human being, so God and the human being are one Christ. He suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose from the dead, ascended into the heavens, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From the, he will, there he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all human beings will rise with their bodies and will give an account of their own deeds. Those who have done good things will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. A person cannot be saved without believing this firmly and faithfully. 
it's a long creed. But the core of it is, is that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all God. They are distinct persons, but they are one. They are un, uh, united. Um, and then it, it goes on to talk about how Jesus is God and man, both at the same time. With the humanity taken up into divinity. So it's really getting at something that is really simple unless you try to overthink it. God has three persons, but he is one God. And if you start to overthink it, you really want to know, like, how exactly does that work? You're not going to get anywhere, but this is the closest we can get, is we can describe all of these things that apply to all of them and kind of how they're distinct. So they are all, and I know this is going over, but I want to, I want to give you the Sparknotes version of this creed. Um, they are all uncreated. They are all eternal. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, God, is the only eternal thing, period. Everything else has a start date. Creation, humanity, angels, demons, you name it, it has a beginning, and it may have an end. God doesn't. He doesn't have a beginning. He doesn't have an end. He is the only eternal thing, period. Um, so, unlimited, eternal, uh, almighty. These are all of the things that they have in common as one God. But then there are some distinctions that it points out. The Father is not created or begotten by anyone. The Son, still not created, but begotten of the Father. And the Holy Spirit is not created or begotten. And begotten means kind of coming from uh, being... It's the same word as, as a son is begotten of his, of his mother. Um, the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and Son. So we, we kind of see how they relate to one another a little bit. Um, and, and it's saying... You have, to faithful, you have to faithfully believe in a triune God and in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who was a human. You have to faithfully believe in these things to be saved. Um, that's what this creed is saying. So if we're, we're condensing it down, my kind of, if we're going to do the, the Book of Concord for Dummies, which is what this series is, the Athanasian Creed says, there are three persons, there are distinguishing factors of each one, but they are all one, they are one God, and you got to believe in this one God for salvation. And I think my addition to it is, don't try to overthink it. Because when you just leave it at that, you know, we got that. We get, we have that part. It's when we try and, and dive in and know exactly how it all works. That's when we get in trouble because those are things God has not told us. So that is the devotion for today. My apologies that it went over. Um, in the future, when we have longer segments of content, we will divide it and go piece by piece. But I thought this was, um, it was good to go through the entire creed all together. So with that, brothers and sisters, go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.